Okay, and welcome. I have just a few more uh, rules of exponents, a uh, few things we like to tidy up, an example to go over here. Uh, notice if I have, for example, 2 to the negative 1 over 3 to the negative 4, uh, that would be 1 over 2 to the first power, and 3 to the negative 4 would be 1 over 3 to the fourth power. And so when I divide fractions, this is just going to give me 1 over 2 to the first times we uh, invert and multiply the divisor so this would be 3 to the fourth over 1. So I end up getting 3 to the fourth on the top and 2 to the first on the bottom and so the effect is that that my my 3 to the negative 4 is I've just brought it up on top of the fraction and made it 3 to the plus 4 and the 2 to the negative 1 has come down and become 2 to the plus 1. So I can do the same thing over here if I had x to the negative 3 over y to the negative 2, I could again think of this as 1 over x cubed. And in the denominator, I'd have 1 over y squared. And then to divide those fractions, I invert and multiply the, the bottom one. So that gives me y squared over x cubed. And you see it's the exact same effect. The y to the negative 2 came up and became positive, And the x to the negative 3 came down and became positive. So the rule is if I have a to the negative n over uh, a to the negative m over b to the negative n, that's going to give me uh, b to the positive n over a to the positive m. And then I can just very quickly simplify them according to that rule. Here's a little more on negative exponents where I mix up the negatives. I have negative 4 to the negative 2. Now, this negative out front, that's what we call the additive inverse. This is the number that is makes it less than 0. But this negative here is the multiplicative inverse. Okay, So, so this is going to be the opposite of uh, 4 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 4 to the positive 2. Okay, So I do my exponent first. Just forget the negative out front there. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 squared. Put the negative out front. So this is going to equal uh, 1 16th. And then the minus sign out front makes it negative. So it's a negative 1 16th. Compare that with this example, negative 4 to the negative 2. The base here is negative 4. Over here, the base is just 4. This raised to the negative 2. So this here is going to be 1 over negative 4 to the positive 2 which is 1 over, of course, negative 4 times negative 4 makes it a positive 16. So this answer ends up being a positive 1 16. So we have to be careful with our minus signs in the, in the parentheses there and understand you know, what the base is and what the negative is referring to. Let's do a, a quick example here. Um, if I had, uh, this is combining all of our rules. So if I had 2x to the negative 3y cubed to the negative 4, uh, I can distribute that exponent of negative 4 to every one of the factors inside. Notice these are all times. There's no pluses in them. So this would be 2 to the negative 4, x to the negative 3 to the negative 4, and y cubed to the negative 4. Here I'll have, uh, in the denominator, I'll have negative 3 to the negative 2, and then x to the negative 4 to the negative 2, and then the y to the negative 2 to the negative 2. OK, so let's uh, go ahead and simplify this. I'm going to leave my, I'll just write my fraction bar here. For the time being, I'm going to leave the, the 2 to the negative 4 right here. And the negative 3 to the negative 2, let's go ahead and just leave that as is. Um, but the x to the negative 3 to the negative 4, my, my power rule says I can just multiply those, and, and the, the rules work whether they're positive or negative numbers. So this is just x to the 12th, y to the negative 12th. I um, already got that there, so this will be x to the 8th, and y to the 4th. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and let's do a little swap rule. Let's bring the negative 3. Uh, to the negative 2. Let's bring that up and make it negative 3 to the positive 2. And let's take the, two ne the negative 4 down and make it 2 to the positive 4. And you'll notice that here I can go ahead and cancel x to the 8th with x to the 12th. That'll leave me x to the 4th. Or if you'd like, you could use your quotient rule and just subtract those exponents. 12 minus 8 is 
4. So that's going to give me x to the 4th. And then this y to the negative 12, uh, I could actually use a quotient rule as well there. I could write this as y to the negative 12 minus 4. That give me y to the negative 16. Or I can go ahead and bring the y to the tw uh, negative 12 down and make it y to the plus 12. And then I'll just add these in the denominator, and I'll get y to the 16th in the denominator. So at any rate, my answer is going to be 9. That's the negative 3 squared, x to the 4th. And here, 2 to the 4th, that's equal to 16. And then the y to the 12th times y to the 4th, I'll add those exponents. That's y to the 16th. So this would be my final answer there. Uh, this last example, you'll notice that I have x plus 2y to the negative 3 over x plus 2y to the negative 5. I can't distribute that negative 3 uh, to these because of the plus, but what I do notice is that these are the same base. I can sort of think of this along the lines of if I had like u to the negative 3 over u to the negative 5. Um, my quotient rule says that would just be u to the negative 3 minus a negative 5, which would be u squared. Um, so I could think of this also as, uh, I mean, that the u is the, is the uh, x plus 2y there. Uh, or I could go ahead and just use my, my, my rule for, for getting rid of negative exponents. I could think of this as x plus 2y to the fifth over x plus 2y to the third. And so that's going to be x plus 2y to the 5 minus 3. Again, because the base is the same there. You're thinking of that whole quantity as the base. So it, your answer ends up being x plus 2y to the second. Okay, so I hope you found this review of uh, exponents helpful.